Featherweight's ready to go inside the ring. Eight rounds of boxing. It is Abelardo Sanchez and Alon Solis. Our referee for this bout, Hamid Fong He. TJ DeSantis, James Smitty Smith, tonight inside the Marina Terra Event Center. Beautiful San Carlos, Sonora, Mexico. Night one of a two night double header here on oh, UFC no. Fight Pass. Both of these guys have been in action this year, fortunately for them. February of uh, 2020 for Sanchez, he got a TKO uh, win. And Solis, we saw him uh, in October with a unanimous decision win over Eddie Valencia. Both prospects with solid records on paper. Seven and one with four knockouts for Sanchez. 11 and 0 with six knockouts for Alon Solis. The big disparity is an amateur experience. A six-time Mexican champ, Solis, with a record, I think he said he was 87-6. and six. And Sanchez told me he only had about 20 amateur fights. So that amateur pedigree, as you know, TJ, is extremely important in, in the sweet science. What's, what's the right number, you think, Smitty, for amateur bouts? You know, it, <laughs> if you're from Cuba 300 <laughs> or from Kazakhstan or, right. or somewhere, it just depends. You know, if you can get, if you can even get in, uh, my God, if you, 100 is phenomenal. I, I, well, I had none. I went right to the pros, and that's why I had a very, very short career, about as short as my height, because it just makes such a difference. And I was down there in Miami with all those Cuban fighters that were so experienced and uh, one of the things, I'd, if I could do anything and wave a magic wand, it would be to bring our amateur program in this country back to what it used to be. I don't think it'll ever be there again, but it, uh, that's a great question. I, I, I would certainly 50. That, that should be the minimum, in my opinion. But, you know, you see so many guys now um, that really don't have that amateur experience. It's... Well. I mean, you can't really make up for experience and I think you know time and time again that's a narrative in a lot of fights is you know a veteran calling upon uh, experience to maybe sometimes beat a better fighter on paper right now these guys are definitely going for it. we saw uh, Sanchez kind of posturing a little bit trying to bait Solis maybe into a firefight very slick move there by Solis slipping a shot and then countering with a, with a very accurate right hand gets nailed with a nice jab there by Sanchez Really loading up on that left hand of the body, but a left hand finds the head of Sanchez by Solis. Oh, uh, 10 seconds know, here of round number one. First one in the books between these featherweights. Abelardo Sanchez, Alon Solis. Every time I look at Solis, I, I think of my a younger version of, uh, of Eric Morales, El Terrible. He looks like a young Eric Morales there, not necessarily as the way he fights, but just his, his look there. Evenly matched fight here. Uh, you know, I, I think you got to lean towards Solis a little bit cleaner. Um, but we, we saw Sanchez try to uh, load up with some shots to the body, trying to uh, bait Solis into a, a, a firefight a little bit. What do you expect in round number two? Uh, you know, if I were uh, Solis, I'd get back on that uh, jab and try to set up his. He has a really uh, nice right hand, which will then set up what he calls his, his best shot, which is a left hook to the body. Uh, the left hook to the body. Also, Sanchez is a uh, best shot. And we saw one of those in round one, a round that I gave to Solis. Round two underway. Again, TJ DeSantis, James Smitty Smith, RJJ Boxing tonight coming to you live from the beautiful Marina Terra Hotel and Spa. What I'd like to see Solis do, too, and I mentioned this when I was calling his, his last fight, a little more upper body movement, head movement, shoulder movement. 
Uh, he's dipping there pretty good, but his head kind of a stationary target. Uh, and Sanchez, his head definitely a stationary target. So, ooh, wow. nice right hand finds the head of Solis. Sanchez trying to make it count. You see what I mean about not having that head movement? And that hurt him. That rocked him, uh, TJ. He's still a little shook up, and what Sanchez should do is jump all over him. See if Solis can buy some time to recover. He's still throwing, but eats another right hand. Short uppercut as well by Sanchez. Trying to make something happen here is Abelardo Sanchez in business, but Solis... So far, so good as far as weathering the storm is concerned. Four KOs in his seven victories for Sanchez. And I, I noticed the power early, and you could hear the power down here in, in round one with one of his body shots. It's the interesting thing about during this pandemic, the way you can hear the shots. Solis has done a good job of weathering the storm and trying to get himself back in it. But believe me, he was hurt. He's still a little wobbly. Blood coming, I think, from his mouth. We just passed the halfway point here, round number two. I mean, when you Man. look at Sanchez, he's in business, but how much do you sell out trying to get a stoppage here? I mean, there's still six rounds to go after this. You know, I think from what I see, it's a great uh, question, but I think I would go after it for if I were Sanchez because uh, I saw some wobbliness from uh, Solis even after the break a second ago. He's still... A little wobbly. Yeah, you can tell by the, the look in his eyes. I mean, he's still very much fighting, but you can tell he's just not what he was earlier in the fight. Sometimes uh, you get that opportunity, and if you don't capitalize, you don't get it again. It slips away. You're right. You don't want to gash yourself out, but the, you know, if you're a good fighter, you, you know what you have in that tank. And adrenaline, when you got a guy hurt, you got to go for it. If you're, especially if you got a good pop uh, in your punch, and I, and I think Sanchez does. Solis now really basically playing defense. Nah, that's not what you do by Sanchez. Showboating he should be <laughs> letting his hands go like that. There we go, two rounds down. Round two definitely belonging to Sanchez. Had Solis hurt there. But as we uh, saw, Solis was definitely game, able to answer the call go you know just kind of switch his uh output to more of a, a defensive posture and he sees round number three i like uh, some of the offense i see in solis and i have in the past but he just gets hit with too many clean right hands you see the action here and that that's what i'm talking about i saw it wow that really hurt him he showed a lot taking that shot because that was about as clean as it can get and it affected him the rest of the round and even this thing up. One round apiece. Folks, when you score a fight, uh, the four criteria, clean heart punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense. And my fifth criteria is who is doing more of what they want to do. And that clearly was Sanchez in that second round. Round three underway. Solis in the white with red. Sanchez in the black with gold. As you heard, Smitty has this even through two rounds. Solis was definitely hurt in round number two, but was able to switch his strategy to one that was more defensive, and we'll see how he tries to respond here in round number three. Definitely get the feeling that the harder puncher of these two is Sanchez. The question is, as this fight goes deeper, will Sanchez be able to retain that power as he becomes more winded? Nice jab there by Solis, finds a home. And that's what he should be doing. He should be moving more and establishing that stick, that left jab. There he landed a nice combination, but he was off balance. Right hand gets through by Solis. Solis complaining of that uh, Sanchez right hand, maybe finding the back of the head. So 
see Solis trying to set up behind that jab here in this third round. And that's what he should be doing. Establish the jab, let it go, vary the jab, give some movement to the stiffer Sanchez and utilize more head movement and upper body movement. There you go. Stole him with a right hand there. Solis definitely has his legs back underneath him and looking a lot better here in round number three than he did at points of round number two. See, Sanchez definitely loading up still with his shots. Well, one of the things St Sanchez does that Solis hasn't totally been able to take advantage, he comes in squared up. His uh, symmetry is wrong. He, he's, you, need to be, you, know, you need to be off center, and he's too square. See his legs there? Yep. That's, uh, he should just really, uh, what Solis should do is when he just throw that right hand right down the center. Don't even point for the chin, or in this case, or even maybe turn it towards the, the, the beard, the, right. the, the billy goat beard that Sanchez has, and it would find a home because he squares up too much. Good fight, though. Absolutely. Coming up on the final 10 here of round number three. Nice left hand. Combination of the body by Solis. There we go. Three rounds down here from inside the beautiful Marina Terra Hotel and Spa Event Center in San Carlos, Mexico. Alon Solis, Abelardo Sanchez doing their best to put on a show for our worldwide audience here on UFC Fight Pass. Smitty, your thoughts on round number three? A really nice bounce back round for Solis, who got in trouble in the second round. Got to his legs under him, as you mentioned, established the jab, landed a couple very clean right hands off of that jab, did a better job his defense was his movement like that but a much better round for uh, the unbeaten fighter see what round number four has in store for us again featherweights inside the ring Milan Solis in the white with red Abelardo Sanchez in the black with gold DJ DeSantis, James Finney Smith, night one of a two-night doubleheader for RJJ Boxing here on UFC Fight Pass. Icon Fighting Federation bringing up the rear on Friday night. We'll see mixed martial arts action inside the ring. I won't be with you for uh, for that one, TJ. You're always with me in spirit, Smitty. <laughs> Good answer. I like the movement of Solis that he's trying to utilize this uh, ring here. Doing a little more feints. Give your opponent something to think about. Not everybody has great natural upper body movement, but you can do other things. Use your legs, feints. Goes a long way. And Sanchez has not been able to land any more solid right hand since we've seen more movement by Solis. It's a good body shot by Sanchez. Sanchez trying to come forward again. Solis able to slow it down a bit, initiate that clinch. That's what you got to love about a good boxing match is the adjustments that are made over the course of a fight. And Sanchez trying to make that adjustment by raw power to the body. Sanchez is abandoning in any pretense of defense. <laughs> it's all offense by him right now. And he is coming in there just not even worried about getting hit and thus he's getting hit a little bit but this is what he should have done when he hurt him you're right yeah you know you talk about round, that, that 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 happening early in the, in the fight as you mentioned the second round like maybe he was just a little bit maybe too tentative to put his foot on the gas pedal good shotgun jab by Solis left hook there by Solis kind of a slapping shot but nevertheless it scores points Get off of those ropes is what he should do. Slide off of there. Now for Solis, he's got to believe that he's eaten Sanchez's best punch and has been able to stay upright for it. 
Is that giving him confidence here, you think, Smitty? I think that, and he's just now established a, a better rhythm and better uh, distance. I, I'd like to see him not even take any of those shots because the way that uh, Sanchez is coming in, it's easy to slide off of the ropes against him because he doesn't cut off the ring. He just comes straight in. Right. He just comes, see, he's not cutting off the ring at all. So any any time that Solis wants to slide out of there, he can. Lands the left hook there. There we go, four rounds down. We've reached the halfway point of this fight. Look in the corner there of Abelardo Sanchez. As we get to the back half of this fight, do you expect any sort of adjustment from Sanchez going into five? Well, you would would hope what he would... Uh, one of the things that might help him is you don't hook with a hooker, but you jab with a jabber. And if he would try to establish his own jab a little bit when he comes in, that might really help him um, in terms of, you know, offsetting some of Solis's accuracy and maybe set up some of his offense because he's just coming in there wailing away. And Solis sees everything at this point. As we mentioned, Solis probably has eaten Sanchez's best shot thus far, but still you'd like to see a bit more defense, maybe more uh, evasive movement from him. Yeah, I always, like to, I always like to see defense. It's one of the things that people forget about, and that's why I always mention it, you know, because of there are even judges who forget about it. A lot of so-called great judges don't even apply it. And ring generalship, well, don't even ask me about that because... Uh, I've met uh, Hall of Fame judges who don't even know what that means. So there's a beautiful jab by Solis. Another one. That's about it. It's really accurate. See how when, when Sanchez comes in, he's just squaring right up. He is so open. But he's a powerful guy. So right. what I'm saying isn't easy. It's tough because he's, so, he's definitely a, the stronger man of the two. But now he's just catching, getting pot shotted by Solis. Not a lot of power with those Solis shots, but so what? Good, better head movement by Allen. A little niftier here, and that's why he's having the success. Yeah, Sanchez, I mean, still not breaking his aggressive posture moving forward, but eating a lot of Solis' shots here in round number five. Sometimes you just got to forget about there. There aren't a lot of fans here, but there are a lot of fans watching and cheering for Solis. You got to, the great fighters have always told me when they're in there, they forget about, they don't even think about nothing but that opponent. You know, uh, it's great to try to impress fans, but at the end of the day, you got to really, this is a focused sport. You really have to be focused and get sort of in that zone. And I think that Solis has found that the last few rounds. He's seeing everything coming. And he's much more accurate. See that right there? He doubled up on the jab. Slid with that. He rolled with that right hand. And he's uh, getting Sanchez uh, a few cocktails. Get him a little, getting him a little drunk. I like that. Cocktails? No, getting no, drunk? That or, analogy. Oh, okay. That analogy. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of tequila right there. Very nice right hand there. You mentioned the styles here on display. Solis just, you know, really slick with his output here. And, and Sanchez has tried to double down on that aggression, but it really hasn't yielded him much. Nice well, right hand there, though. And you brought out a nice point earlier. When you have that uh, stoic style and you're, everything's hard and you're tense like Sanchez, you have a tendency to, to tire out. And you mentioned, well, will he carry that power? I see the power diminishing. Not to mention that he's getting hit with a lot of shots and I see some blood in his mouth and who's the guy coming forward now That's exactly right it's Juan Solis the tide turning a bit in this fight as far as the yeah, output knows. is concerned final 10 seconds here nice right uppercut there by Solis finds a home and Solis definitely coming alive here right oh. hand again that was a big round for Allen for Solis you gotta believe that maybe two heading you know, later into this fight that he, he's stealing the aggressive posture and the aggressive momentum from Sanchez. And, and that's got to be a bit uh, debilitating uh, from Sanchez as, as he's been the one always moving forward. And now it's his opponent that's maybe pushing him back. 
Yeah, and, and again, you, you set it up well earlier, mentioning uh, uh, would, would Sanchez carry that power, and Solis weathered that uh, storm in round two, and now he is the one uh, applying uh, the thunder and lightning with, bo with both hands, and he's doing a nice job of setting it off uh, up off of his uh, jab, and again, I like the defensive stuff I'm seeing from him as well. See the action in round five, popping the jab, slipping a shot, doubling up with a couple of more, and you just see that uh, that was bad posture there by Sanchez. And I have Solis pulling, uh, pulling out uh, to a three-point lead now. You mentioned the uh, aggressive posture of Solis there in that last round. Do you expect that to carry through uh, into this round? I, I, I think he'll let that dictate by what he sees from, from Sanchez. I just don't see a lot of the, the, the starch and steam that Sanchez had earlier. And he's got his mouth open from time to time, which is obvious sign of, of fatigue. But if he's going back, then he's uh, running out of gas. He is not a guy that's going, typically would go back. Lands a couple of shots there. And again, though, still heavy as far as the output is concerned. Maybe not as quality as he would like it. Would you like to see Sanchez maybe not necessarily take a, a round off, but maybe try to conserve some energy for, you know, a, a, a surge later in this fight? Because right now, the, the punches just don't have the pop. Yeah, and I think one of the things that would behoove him is what he just did there. Start landing. Well, that'll take a lot out of you, that body shot. But just to use his own jab to give himself, uh, to land some shots and uh, create some openings and, and, and also give himself some time to try to recover. But now he's getting hit with some really great body shots by Solis. And he's, he's, he's backing up. He's against the ropes. He's not moving. So he could be in a situation of getting stopped here. Beautiful left hand finds he's a hurt. home for Solis. And out of that corner now is Sanchez, but still very much in trouble. Left hand finds a home again. So he should throw the uppercut. Uh, I'm always calling for uppercuts when guys drop their heads, but and so Lisa, there it was. Beautiful. You can see just the look on the face of Sanchez showing and painting a much different picture than earlier in this fight again. Back into the corner trying to utilize some head movement. Solis really nice going right to the solar plexus of Sanchez. And he's he's uh, close to to going down. He's in a lot of trouble. I don't know if Solis uh, knows how much trouble he's in, but we certainly can see it. You can see a nod on the left side of the face of Sanchez. Starting to show itself. Nice right hand to the body. Sanchez still trying to throw in kind, but not with the power or aggression that we saw so, earlier in the fight. So he's switching to southpaw. Must have seen something. Now back to conventional. He's trying to create something. But he is uh, clearly dominating the action. Final 10 seconds here of the round. You know, Spitty, we've talked a lot about uh, aggression here tonight in San Carlos, and I like the aggression by Solis there in the latter part of that round. He's clearly in control, clearly close to getting this fight, you know, closer to a stoppage where he gets his hand raised, but not too aggressive, not putting himself in a position to get countered and, and still be hurt by one of those powerful shots by Sanchez. I, I like this controlled, measured approach. He has momentum on his side. He can lean on it. Well, maybe that getting nailed with that uh, right hand in round two that hurt him uh, might have done him some good in terms of that it made him concentrate on the other uh, important items of the sweet science because he's taken over from that point. I have him up by four points now with, what, a couple of rounds to go. And when you look at Sanchez, I mean, we talked about his power and his aggression. Uh, that has taken a, a, a backseat a bit to not only the offensive output from Solis, but also, you know, just the, the wear and tear of, of fatigue. And we'll, we'll see if he can, you know, pull something out here. He's got to try to land something big to get back, uh, to get his fight back where it was in, in the second round. He's got a long way to go. See how reluctant Sanchez is now to come in. He's the guy going back. Solis is the guy coming forward and dictating the uh, pace. Popping him with a jab. 
was a combination. That was a beautiful 4-5 punch combination. Again, hurt him with a left hook to the body. Pumping the jab. Love to see that. Can't throw enough jabs, in my opinion. The shots growing here by Solis, as is his confidence. Here in round number seven, definitely in control is Milan Solis. He's throwing, letting his hands go in combinations now. Four and five punch combinations, looking for that seventh KO in his 12th victory. And he could be closing in on a, on a stoppage. If you go right back to the body with that left hook, he's, he, he's looking for it. Ooh, really bunching up those right hands there is Solis. And th there's a great example of what I mean. Not all of those shots were hard, but he was throwing three, four, five of them at a time to try to set something else up. Now, Raul, he's kind of throwing pity pat punches, but looking to set up a big one like that left hook to the body. Just missed with that right hand. Even the late great Joe Frazier would throw three or four slight left hooks to set up the big left hook. Joe told me in an interview once he'd do that to kind of, out, that hurt him, that left hook, to lull his opponent, thinking that this is all you got on that left hook, and then the one that would come that would put you to sleep. Less than a minute remains here in round number seven. Almost a shoe shine effect by Solis there. Might be able to get a stoppage with that too by just getting uh, Sanchez against the ropes and doing what Oscar used to do so much, that shoe shine to the, right to the head. And these referees today in today's game will land eight or nine shots and they'll stop it. If nothing's coming back. And a lot of offensive output here by Alon Solis under 30 seconds left in round number seven. Sanchez trying to find something here with some shots of his own, Man, but that left hook ate a right. hard left hook to the body, Smitty. Should go right back to that left hook. He goes ah. back, stopping it, yep. That's a wrap. Oh, Alon here. Solis, oh, victorious, man. picking up the 12th win of his professional campaign, his seventh by way of stoppage, and wow. That is uh, quite the or quite the turn of uh, fate from what we saw in round number two when Solis was badly hurt. But uh, tonight, uh, it belongs to him. He'll get his hand raised. You know, this is, this, I think, the third time I've seen him. The second or third time. I think it's the third time. And um, something happened after that second round. He turned into a different fighter or the fighter he should be. And everything from that point on was all Solis. Uh, offensively, defensively ring generalship, the whole package. And I really like what I saw after round two. And when you look at that second round, you never want to get hit as a fighter, but you know, Solis can call on this performance moving forward in a future fight when he may be hurt and in that situation again. He had a very heavy-handed Abelardo Sanchez in front of him tonight, and he's able to weather that storm and ultimately uh, unleash the storm uh, of his own in that seventh round, getting the stoppage. And that's that's what you look for in a fighter, uh, able to make adjustments, to adapt, and he uh, did a great job uh, of that. And uh, he was going for the stoppage, I could see it, and he got it, and he remains unbeaten. Now 12-0 and 0 is the undefeated Alon Solis, getting the seventh knockout of his career. Definitely a night to remember for that young man as he moves forward, just 21 years old. The future is very bright for Juarez's Alon Solis. For the official time of the stoppage, here's Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, in an effort to prevent the blue corner from receiving further punishment, referee Hamid Funki called the halt to the action with an official time of 2 minutes 47 seconds of the seventh and penultimate round, declaring the winner. By way of technical knockout, still undefeated, El Cachorro, Alan Solis. 12 wins, 7 by way of knockout, Alan Solis fighting out of Juarez, Mexico. Really putting on a show for our audience tonight all over the world watching live on UFC Fight Pass. Again, this is night one of a double header for RJJ Boxing, and we've been treated to uh, quite a show here, two fights in. Yeah, I, I, you know, you love to see the adjustments in a 
and a young fighter, Solis, you know, but 21 years of age and clipped with a couple of right hands that really got him in trouble. And he would come back and establish his own prowess. Sanchez, a good opponent for him. Another great example of a guy, guy Taylor, the matchmaker, doing a great job. Because this was very entertaining, really the entire way, even when when uh, Solis took over. And you can see him taking over right here. Starting to see everything, feel everything, and then that sets up letting everything go. Popping the jab. Blocking, actually showing some defense, covering up. He actually went southpaw for a few moments. But again, after that uh, third and fourth round, he just really took over. And he became the aggressor, whipping those left hooks in. Short one to the head, turned it over, torqued it. Another one, all that would really set up some body shots like that and back to the head. And <laughs> something of... I'm not la I'm only laughing because I've I've been hit with those kind of body shots and that was like there was five straight right hands in a row. Like to see that. He was feeling it, and unfortunately for Sanchez, so was he. Absolutely, Sanchez very game throughout the fight, but tonight this one belongs to Alonso Lee's.